Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. There are a lot of capless or uh, fountain pens that do not have like a cap, traditional cap out there in the market. Um, just naming a few, there is uh, there's definitely the Lamy Dialog series of pens. I think Dialog 3, uh, probably it started with Dialog 1, Dialog CC. Uh, it's probably the one of the latest ones from, from Lamy. There are also um, higher end vanishing point uh, pens from Pilot, namely the LS. And there's, always, there's also the, the cheaper end of the range when it comes to capless fountain pens. And that's the very popular one would be the Curidas by Platinum. And um, there's even competition within the Pilot stable. There's actually the Pilot Decimo, which is a slimmer version of the Vanishing Point slash Capless. And of course, that you know, recently, I think China has come up with a few imitation or replica uh, versions of the Vanishing Points uh, out there in the market. But we won't really go through that. In, in my mind, I, I do not see any reason to stray beyond these two pens if you are thinking of buying a capless pen. The LS and the Dialog series, in my opinion, I've been looking at them very long and keeping them in my, uh, you know, my shopping cart when, when I nearly bought um, those pens, but they are just too expensive. I think generally they are nearly double the price of um, standard series of Vanishing Point and Fermo. And the Curidas, I've, I've actually looked at it several times in the shop and it just feels too plasticky to me. Um, if I wanted to get a Curidas, I'm just thinking, why not just get a Preppy or, you know, something else right, rather than that particular pen. I'm sure the Curidas nib is very nice, but um, that's just my exist my feeling about that pen. The Decimo is a slimmer version, like I mentioned, of the Capless and the Vanishing Point. But I feel that you know I generally prefer pens that have a little bit more girth anyway. So um, kind of discounted that when I was looking for a Capless pen way back a couple a year or two ago. Um, I would I would not consider the the imitation or the replica vanishing point at all. So in my mind, like I said, um, if I was looking for a capless pen, these two are my pretty much my only option. And I, you know, touch wood, I probably won't buy any other one of those which I mentioned earlier on. So today's video is uh, that was kind of a strange introduction, but today's video is is kind of doing a comparison of these two pens. I promised to do so maybe about, you know, four, four to five months ago, but I did not. So uh, th this is what I'm going to be going, th going through. Uh, and if you've watched comparison videos from me in the past, you'll probably see me kind of start with the end in mind, right? So, I mean, to be very honest, um, which do I prefer out of these two? I actually prefer the, the Vanishing Point slash Capless purely because of the fact that it can deploy using this, this mechanism. Um, I mean, the Fermo's mechanism as well as the Lamy Dialog series as well as the LS, they have this twist mechanism which it's nice and it's supposed to be silent but it is pretty difficult to do one-handed as I probably showed in one of my last videos. Uh, I'll try to put a clip out there of me on the plane trying to deploy uh, this pen one-handed. It wasn't pretty, right? This one is super easy. Just do this and you deploy the, the nib ready for writing. Um, so kind of starting off with um, these two pens. I just want to start off with similarities. Uh, these two pens are very similar pens, right? They both have uh, construction using brass and there's paint. It's painted finish, a very nice painted finish, I might say, very well made. 
and it's actually you know paint over brass and um, so the, they are both heavy as a result uh, I've, the weight in terms of weight they are actually pretty uh, close the vanishing point is about 31 grams on my scale and uh, the thermal is it's about one one gram or one and a half grams heavier at about 32 and a half grams so fairly heavy pens because of that brass construction I mean if you were to compare with um, a 912 Pilot Custom Heritage 912 which to me is a fairly standard resin pen it's easily 10 grams lighter or close maybe maybe not 10 grams but uh, with the cartridge but easily lighter like five by by more than maybe five to seven grams and uh, you might not think that it, it makes such a big difference but when it comes to long spells of writing writing with a lighter pen or not not such a heavy pen makes a big difference to me so uh, these two pens I feel are compromise pens like I mentioned because of the weight they are not I feel that they are not meant for long writing sessions I mean other people might disagree other people might say that uh, the pens you know they can actually use these for for hours and hours but for me I, I feel that after writing for a while with these two pens uh, and we'll get to the grip later on it's it kind of gets a little bit uh, weighty another thing about these two pens which due to the, their design of being capless I feel that they are ideal for travel. Uh, in the last video I did, where I went to uh, went went overseas for for a while, um, all I brought was actually the thermo, and my rationale for it was. Uh, please excuse this because I'm. I'll show you. I'm going to show you the clip um, when it's when it's uh, clipped onto a shirt. Right. So I just 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 bear with me with this one. Uh, what I what my my rationale was when I just brought the thermo um, as my only pen was if I ran out I actually filled up the the ink of the con 40 all the way to the brim and I figured if I ran out of ink during the trip all I needed to do is kind of pop a cartridge in um, in there by pilot and I was ready to go so that was my rationale and I, I probably wasn't planning to write a lot during that visit uh, so to me, I, I feel it's ideal for travel. Some people might say, you know, get a piston pen or something like that, which has which has a much bigger ink reservoir. But um, these will be difficult to fill if you don't have an ink bottle uh, where you go. And I don't really feel comfortable bringing an ink bottle with me when I when I travel. Right? Uh, I'm not sure whether it's necessary or not. So in terms of similarities, I feel that. Um, those are the similarities. In, feel, in terms of the differences, um, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. So, if you look at the two pens, and I'm going to take away these little uh, pen pouches after I do this. Uh, the main, the, one of the main first differences is the way that they actually clip. If you look at the Fermo, you can see that it has a very intricate design clip, which actually is a bit lower it actually sits a little bit lower in profile uh, compared to the vanishing point which is a little bit higher kind of pokes out a little bit higher and it has this very elaborate little up, up tick down here um, and that's not the main thing I mean having this design makes it pretty easy to slip it in and out of a shirt pocket or even a like a, a piece of paper if you're actually clipping this to a notebook um, the main thing is that do you notice how low uh, I'm just gonna push the material all the way to the end you'll notice that how much lower the thermal, thermal kind of lies if you actually push it all the way up compared to the vanishing point so if you want a discreet look when when in the pocket or you know, on, on the, when clipped on a book or notebook, Fermo would be my pick for that, right? And if you're looking for, if you frequently use a clip, I think this clip is a little bit more practical in use. 
even though I think the vanishing points clip is a little bit more elegant. Okay, so um, from the top, they look very similar uh, with the with the kind of the my take on it is that the vanishing point is a little bit more sculpted. They, they put in a little bit more thinking around this where that you can see there's a little cutoff down here, whereas this is just a kind of a round shape down there. The mechanism wise, both of them work flawlessly. Uh, the pens don't dry out. Uh, the, in terms of leakages, my Fermo didn't leak that much. Right? It was just a tiny bit of leakage, which was totally fine, even though when I, I went up uh, a pressurized uh, plane cabin and so on. Right? Going on to the next difference, it, it's actually the slimness of the pen. So the Fermo and might not, maybe it would be better if I put it on a piece of paper. The Fermo is actually a, a very slightly slimmer pen. Right? In terms of uh, key dimensions, the only dimension which I think is important when, when it comes to looking at slimness is actually the area where you are actually gripping the pen when writing. And the Fermo kind of, uh, if you have slightly smaller hands, the Fermo might fit your hand a little bit better when writing compared to the vanishing point. It has a section of about 10 and a half, which for me is it's perfectly fine. However, some people might find that the vanishing point section, if you hold it right at this spot down here, to be a little bit thick. Right. As I measure, measured it, um, it's about 11.8 um, millimeters. I'm not sure whether I said centimeters just now, but this is 10 and a half millimeters, and this is 11.8 millimeters, millimeters. And I think in terms of 11.8 millimeters is probably like as broad as I would go when it comes to uh, a section where I can write comfortably for a long time, right? Um, just taking as a benchmark in my Pilot 912, uh, the section is 11 millimeters, and that's pretty much a perfect size section for me. Um, so in terms of thickness, consider the Fermo if you have slightly smaller hands and you prefer a slightly slimmer section. Um, in terms of comfort with the little clip down here, I don't have a problem with it. Some people might find the pens very uncomfortable with a, with a clip down here. Um, I have seen people actually remove the clip entirely and write this way, but I wouldn't do so. But uh, try out these pens in the shop to see whether or not you find this position uh, comfortable. I don't have any problem, like I said, holding the pens um, and writing. Right? In terms of the other dimension, which is the, the you know, could be a deal breaker for you. Uh, it's actually the length of the pen. When both pens are not, uh, I mean, in deployed, I mean, both of their nips are not deployed right now. They are about the same length. But the moment you deploy the vanishing point, believe it or not, the pen actually gets slightly shorter, right? So basically, uh, once you deploy this, right, this part of the pen becomes shorter and it's roughly, um, based on my measurement, about 13.8 centimeters long. Whereas the, um, the Fermo, it actually doesn't, um, I mean, the, the rear part of the pen doesn't really change in length. And if you look at the two pens when they are deployed, you can see the big difference in, in their length. The Fermo actually becomes longer and it becomes about I'm trying to I'm trying to balance it down here. Fermo becomes about fourteen point eight centimeters, which is a very very long pen, right? This coupled with the fact that the the back end of the Fermo, the mechanism down here, is a little bit heavier than that of the vanishing point. So as a result, this part of the pen where you can see the, the these two rings down here, that's actually the van um, the Fermo's balance balancing point, right? So it's as you can see, it's very slightly uh, or this much back weighted, which means when you hold the Fermo, you can feel the weight 
at the back of your hand. Uh, compared to when you deploy a vanishing point, right, the pen actually is perfectly weighted in the middle of the pen. Uh, I find it extremely comfortable this way. Right? There is still a weight because of that brass construction at the back of the pen. So that's the other thing to, to kind of uh, consider because how long the Fermo gets. I don't think I have a pen that, that is this long in my collection, right? Um, besides this, so besides the, the main things in that, um, the Fermo is longer, is slightly thin, thinner and so on. The next thing that I would probably say about the, that, was probably, that probably stands out from, from these two pens, right? It's actually the deployment. When the Fermo and I think the LS was, uh, came out, it was touted, I believe, that this mechanism is silent. So, I mean, I'll bring it up to my microphone and I'll try to deploy the pen. Not sure whether they'll come out on camera, but that's the how quietly you can deploy the Fermo, right? Compared to the vanishing point, I mean, you can try very hard, but there will be that little click when you deploy the thermal, which maybe in a very quiet board room or some situations, you might not want to have this uh, sound, right? So that's, that's the other consideration. For me, I don't really mind the sound of this deployment, um, but it, it it might bother you. So, I mean, just take that into account. That's probably the, the, the kind of the third most um, important uh, characteristic between these two pens. In terms of nips, the Fermo doesn't have a lot of choice when it comes to nips. I believe it comes in a fine and a medium. I mean, I, I might be wrong. So not, not a lot ch of choice when it comes to nips. However, you can easily uh, take the this nib module and fit it from a vanishing point no problem which is what I frequently do I frequently interchange um, the nib units from from the vanishing point and the fermo uh, the other thing about the fermo is color wise there aren't a lot of choices in terms of existing colors I think there's a green there's a black this there's, there's a blue which is this one and the silver and that's it Vanishing Point has huge color range. Um, in addition to the huge color range based on the painted pens, there are also the Radin models, which are like super expensive. There's the striped model, and then there's the wood model. The wood model, bear in mind, is a little bit thicker than the plastic, um, than the painted brass model, right? The other difference when it comes to these two pens is the fact that the, the Vanishing Point comes in two with two nib options when it comes to nib materials it has this nib which is um, not sure you can actually see it uh, on the camera but it has this 18k uh, nib option and it also has what they call the special alloy option the pens actually are roughly I would say um, not sure, I'm not, I don't think it's 50% cheaper, but it's probably about 30 or 40% cheaper if you get the special alloy versions. Haven't tried one of those. I'm tempted to do so uh, if I find it find a good deal. Uh, but bear in mind, the Vanishing Point does have an option where the nib isn't the 18 karat nib. Um, so that's, and in terms of the 18 karat nib options for the Vanishing Point, there are quite a few more options as compared to the Fermo. This one actually has, uh, the van Vanishing Point actually has the extra fine, which this one doesn't have. It has the broad and it has the stub, right? Um, so in terms of uh, an absolute conclusion between these two pens, like I said, I prefer the vanishing point purely because of the fact that this is a compromise pen in the first place. If I wanted a, a pen for, like I said, serious writing for, for boardroom use or for signing or for any other, uh, you know, long writing ex 
um, stint, I would just take a normal resin pen uh, that, and, and that will do fine for me, right? But for, for the purpose of what I think the vanishing point is, it's actually a pen which is ideal for travel. Uh, you don't lose the cap. You can deploy it easily in, in places, very tight spaces like airports, uh, um, in, in uh, airplane um, seats where it's very tight. What, what you want to do is just quickly take your pen out, maybe you know, fill in your passport card, things like that. I, f I feel that out of these two options down here, I prefer this. Although I did travel with the FOMO and it, it worked fine, right? It was just a little bit more tedious to deploy and that was it. Uh, but the vanishing point takes my, my pick just by, by a little bit. You won't go wrong with these two pens. Um, my personal favorite of the uh, vanishing point finishes is actually the, the matte black or any of the matte versions. I think there's a matte blue um, and some other different mattes because of it, it's way more comfortable with the pen being matte. I did, the, I did this comparison using the, the shiny ones because, um, because these two other, they look similar, you know, finish wise. Um, so that was my comparison between the Fermo and the uh, Pilot uh, Vanishing Point slash Capless. Bit a very long video. Uh, hope you learned something from the video. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions. Please ask them in the comments below. I'll put a description in the description of my of my video um, if I have any points that I left out. Um, and as as always, you know, let me know your comments, and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.